Hey there, it's CG Willie, and today I have a review video. I just finished cracking open the nine packs that came in my Magic the Gathering Corset 2015 Fat Pack. Before I get into my analysis of the Fat Pack, I'll cover how I did with Fat Pack Bingo. Unfortunately, I did not get bingo. After having a streak of getting bingo four times in a row, I have not hit bingo in my last two attempts, but I did come close to reaching bingo with the last five packs, I could have reached bingo in three different ways by pulling any Painland, Court of Calling, or a Foil Rare or Foil Mythic. The silver lining to not getting bingo is that I can always start a new streak, so I can definitely see bingo returning in the future. Now to the fat pack analysis. After cracking the packs, I like to see how close I came to pulling every card in the Corset 2015 expansion from a fat pack. There are 269 cards in Core Set 2015. The Fat Pack has 9 packs and 15 cards per pack, making the total number of cards pulled 135. Out of the 135 cards possible in my 2015 Core Set Fat Pack, I pulled 99 different cards for a 73% non-duplication rate. Comparing it to other similar Fat Packs that I've opened, I pulled a 77% non-duplication rate from Dragons of Tarkir, a 69% non-duplication rate from Gatecrash, and a 77% non-duplication rate from my Corset 2014 Fat Pack. With 269 cards in the expansion, I pulled 98 different cards, or 36% of the set. Once again, comparing it to other similar Fat Packs that I've opened, I pulled 38% of the cards from the Dragons of Tarkir set, 35% of the cards from the Gatecrash set, and 42% of the cards from Corset 2014. I found that I can typically pull a little more than one third of the set from a fat pack. With commons and uncommons comprising most of the cards from a fat pack, I would need to purchase at least eight more fat packs and not have a single rare or mythic rare duplicate in order to pull every card in the set. I'm not gonna be doing that. Out of the 101 commons in Corset 2015, I pulled 57 different or 56% of the commons in the set. That is way too many duplicates and triplicates. Out of the 80 uncommons in the set, I pulled 23 different or 28% of the uncommons in the set. Out of the 53 rares, I pulled 8 different or 15% of the rares in the set. Out of the 15 mythic rares, I pulled 1 or 6% of the mythic rares in the set. Finally, out of the 20 basic lands, I pulled 9 different or 45% of the basic lands in the set. A little bit more detail on some of the cool cards that I got out of the set. I pulled 1 foil, uncommon, endless obedience. Look at its foily goodness. I pulled 4 tokens, 1 soldier, 2 spirits, 1 green insect with flying and death touch. I was also able to pull 1 planeswalker emblem. It's the emblem for Garouk Apex Predator. And of course, I pulled four useless advertisement cards. These easily could have been tokens that have the advertisements on the back. I pulled 23 duplicates from my 2015 Core Set Fat Pack. They were all commons except for three uncommons. I pulled two Into the Void, two Leeching Slivers, and two Altec Bloodseekers. Pulling over 20 duplicates in a fat pack is definitely a drawback. Unfortunately, I also pulled 12 triplicates. They were all commons except for one uncommon. I got three Leeching Slivers, which I really don't mind because of the value, but it was also the first time that I've pulled an uncommon triplicate. Pulling over five triplicates from a fat pack is pretty rough, but wait, I pulled a complete playset of Necrobite. That is just poor collation on Wizards of the Coast. Come on, Watsy, you have to do better. Okay, what was the monetary value of my fat pack? I'd like to see if I was able to pull cards from the fat pack that have a value exceeding what I paid for the fat pack. I will only be considering the TCG player market value for the Mythic Rares, Rares, and Foils, for uncommons or commons, I will include any cards with a value over a dollar. 
there aren't any commons over a dollar. For uncommons over a dollar, I pulled three leeching slivers at $2.08 a piece, a profane memento at $2.57, third highest card value from my fat pack. Uh, that's not very good. For the rares, I pulled Jalira Master Polymorphist at 22 cents, Mercurial Pretender also at 22 cents, Necromancer Stockpile at 29 cents, Genesis Hydra at 42 cents, Indulgent Tormentor 51 cents, Chief Engineer at 71 cents, Resolute Archangel got me over a dollar at a dollar eighteen. Polymorphous Jest was a dollar twenty nine. I pulled one mythic rare, a planeswalker, a Johnny Steadfast. Six dollars and twenty one cents coming in at the highest value card from my fat pack. Wait, what about my second highest valued card? Well, yes, I did pull, as you recall. The emblem for Garuk Apex Predator. And yes, my second highest value card was a green insect token with flying and death touch coming in at $5.80. The total value of cards from my fat pack was $27.58. Not too bad considering that I was able to find a deal and purchase my Corset 2015 fat pack for $30. I suppose that if I include the value of all other cards in the fat pack with the average value of a common at five cents and an uncommon at 10 cents, I would have a total value around $35, which pushes me over what I spent. As I have said in previous fat pack or bundle bingos, I don't spend my money trying to open cards with a value equal or greater than what I spent. I think buying fat packs or bundles are a worthwhile expense from a collector standpoint. Even if I am buying to simply collect them, I try never to spend more than $35 for either a fat pack or bundle. However, I might have to increase how much I pay since the prices for older fat packs and bundles, heck even newly released bundles, aren't coming down in price anytime soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. I will be back soon with another Magic the Gathering cracking experience. Will I be returning to bingo? Tune in to find out what I will crack next.